Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to show you how to do an oil change on your car. So the tools that we're going to need are right here on this table. Now you're going to need something to first remove your drain plug from down underneath the engine. Now for my car I need a 17 millimeter socket and I've also got this magnetic screwdriver type deal that you attach on the back of it and loosen it off afterwards. You're going to need some replacement oil, you're going to need a new engine filter, and you're going to need some sort of way to remove your old filter from the car. Now something that's overlooked very often is this. This is an aluminum crush washer that actually goes on the bolt for the drain plug. You want to replace this every single time you do an oil change. These things cost like 15 cents so they're not expensive to replace but they make sure that you get a nice seal between your, uh, your drain plug and your oil pan. Moving your way down here we're going to need something to get underneath the car so I'm using a creeper. You're going to need something to catch all the oil with. You're probably going to need a rag because oil changes are usually a little messy. You're going to need either a jack stands right here and a jack to lift the car in the air. Or if you want, you can run car ramps like this. Now because I lowered my car, my car's too low for the ramps to go underneath. So I'm going to be using my jack and jack stands. So before we can perform an oil change on our car, we have to make sure that the oil is warmed up and can flow easily. If you don't have an oil temperature gauge, you can always take a look at your coolant temperature. Now whenever the engine coolant gets to operating temperature, it's safe to say that your engine oil is warmed up too. So, park the car after you've gotten it nice and warm, and let it sit for a good 15 minutes. So get home, pop your hood, put the car in gear or park, and make sure that your e-brake is fully engaged. If your car is high enough or if it's at the stock ride height, take advantage of some wheel ramps, put them in the front of the car, and drive the car up onto them so you can get access to underneath the engine block so we can do our oil change. Now because my car is too low, I actually can't get those underneath it. So what I've got to do is go the old fashioned way with a jack and jack stands to lift the front end of the car up. So after you open the hood, you're going to come in here, you're going to remove your oil fill cap. So set that aside, just leave that right there. And this way you'll know that you need to put oil inside the engine. You still haven't put it in yet. Our next step is going to be removing and emptying all the oil from the engine. So in order to do that, we're going to have to get our ratchet with our socket, this little magnet screwdriver thing our creeper, and then we're also going to need our oil catch can. So let's go underneath the car and let's unloosen this bolt. So bring this back into here. Now you're going to have to find your bolt and it's going to be somewhere underneath your engine block. Now for my car, it's very convenient because I've got my filter right here and my bolt right here. I've got to remove both of these. So I'm going to set the camera down and I'm going to remove this bolt, but I'm first just going to loosen it and crack it loose. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Sometimes these can get a little stuck. So can you see now that it's just hand tight? After that, I'm going to get my little magnet thing, attach it to the end of it, and then continue to unloosen this so that I can remove the bolt without getting my hands and everything covered in oil. Now keep in mind, as soon as you remove this little bolt, this bolt right here, as soon as you take it out, oil is going to want to come out. As you can see, some of it's starting right now. So anticipate the oil because it's going to come shooting out. So loosen this. I'll set this up right here. Take it off. And then the oil is going to start spraying out as soon as I remove it. Ready? Just like that. Now keep in mind this is hot oil still because we just went for a drive. So just let this sit here and let it drain. In the meantime, while this is emptying out, crack open and loosen the oil filter. Now, when you tighten these and install them, they should be just hand tight. So they shouldn't be too bad. You might be able to loosen these off by hand. But if not, grab one of the tools, one of the filter wrenches, and take it off. Now, depending on the size of your filter and the configuration of it, you might be able to use one of these sockets for it. You might need to use these grips right here, or you might even need to use an oil filter wrench. Now, I've got two sizes here, one for like a big truck and one for, say, my car. Now, I'm going to be using this to take it out. So just you attach it onto the filter. So what you do with it is you just get the filter underneath inside and you turn and it'll loosen itself out. Be careful when you're removing the filter because there's still gonna be oil in it. As you can see after I just loosened it up, some oil's coming out. Let it sit for a minute and then afterwards take it out and let it sit on top of that filter spot. 
So you just let it sit upside down and the rest of the oil is going to want to pour out. In the meantime, let's take our bolt and our little magnet and let's worry about this. When you remove this drain plug bolt on the bottom of the engine block, you want to make sure that this little crush washer comes off with it. Now every single time that you do an oil change, you want to replace it with a new one. So these little crush washers, these are designed, well, exactly what they sound like. They, they're designed to be crushed every time that you put your bolt in and thread it into the oil pan. These are a soft metal, they're an aluminum. So what that means is that these are going to give out before this steel bolt will. So when you tighten this up, this little aluminum washer right here is going to want to shrink and like compress and squeeze together and it's going to make a nice seal between the bolt and the oil pan that this is going to go into. If you don't have one on the car, the oil guys probably didn't bother even installing one of these. Now that's one of the benefits of doing your own oil changes. You get to make sure that the job is getting done right. Another neat feature of these oil drain bolts is that 9 times out of 10, these are magnetic. So if you see any metal or anything that's on the end of the tip, that means that there's a particle or a piston or a ring or anything inside the engine that's breaking apart. Now that's bad news. Now luckily on mine, it's clean, so that means my engine's still good. But take note of it, and if there's any metal, just clean it off, wipe it off with like a rag or whatever, and make sure that it's clean when you reinstall it. Now right here I've got a new filter that we're going to be replacing on the car. Now see this little oil ring right here? This O-ring? This, this is very important. You really want to make sure that you're installing only one of these on your car. So when we just took out our oil filter, so the old one on the car, you want to make sure that this little oil seal right here, you really want to make sure that this comes off with it. If it doesn't, if you put a seal on top of another seal, so if you mount it and there's two of them, you're not going to have a good seal between this and the engine block. So when you screw this on, oil can spray out in all the areas around here and you're going to have to do another oil change because you did a little boo-boo and didn't take two seconds to make note that there was an extra one. So now that we let most of the oil come out and drain out of the filter, we want to remove the filter and put it right here so the rest of the oil in it can uh, drain out. So just unscrew it. Be careful when you're doing this because it might want to drop, so just hold it and be careful. Unthread it a little bit at a time. And once it comes loose, turn it upside down and let the oil drain out of it. Come on. Anytime now. See all that oil? So you're going to want to let this drain for a good 24 hours at least. And then say bring this back to Canadian Tire, Walmart, or wherever you bought your filters. So see how we're just getting drips out of the bottom of the block, or the oil pan? Clean this up, and you want to install your new bolt and washer together. So come in through here, thread it in by hand, like this. And then later we're going to come up with a torque wrench to make sure that this is properly tightened. Clean it all up after. Now we're going to move this out of the way. Just so I can show you this, this is where the oil filter is going to seat. You want to make sure that there's not an O-ring on this. So come in here, give this a little, little wipe, make sure there's nothing on there. And then we're going to go ahead and install our new one back on. So right here I've got my old oil filter. And see how I've got this extra ring? You really want to make sure this comes off. So we're going to set this aside. And make sure that you let this empty for a good 24 hours so all the remaining oil inside of here can filter out. As you can see, there's still some in here. So let it filter out for 24 hours at least. And then, uh, then we're going to go return this and bring this back safely. So to get this new filter ready to be put back on our car, we're going to take off the little ring that's on top. So the little ring that's on there. We're going to open up our oil. And what we're going to do with this is we're actually going to dunk this inside the oil and make sure that it gets lubed up. Now it's going to make it so our oil, our ring and everything and our filter is going to go on nice and easy and we're not going to have any problems. So just make sure it's not dripping and then just mount it back on top of the filter. After that's on, we're still not done. We still have to prime the actual oil filter with oil before we actually put it back on our car. Now this is very overlooked and not a lot of people do this, but this is the actual proper way to do this. Now the reason why we're going to be putting oil inside of here beforehand is we don't want our engine to starve of oil when we initially turn on our car and get our oil system going. If we don't put any oil in here, we're going to starve our engine from getting oil. So we're going to get metal on metal and that's going to be wearing our engine down. So just fill it up a little bit. Now be careful when you're doing this. So I'm going to set that down. 
You don't need much in here, you just want to prime it. And just like that, this is good. So let's get our filter and let's go mount this inside the car. So you want to make sure that you don't cross thread this when we install this back on. And make sure you keep it up so any of the oil doesn't come out. So take your time and just turn and thread this on. And the proper torque spec, there isn't actually like a, a, a proper reading for these things. You just want to make sure that these are as tight as you can go by hand. <clears throat> so just like that, so this thing is not coming off. Now if you've got an actual cartridge style filter, so say a filter that goes on top and you've got the replaceable internals, kind of like this right here, this is on my brother's Mini Cooper. What you're going to want to do is you're going to actually want to get a proper torque spec for that before you torque it and turn it properly. You don't want to over torque it and turn it too much and then strip all the threads on the inside. So before I put the car down on the ground and put more oil in, I have to make sure that I tighten down and torque that oil drain bolt properly. Now for my car, it's got to be tightened down to 29 foot-pounds. So I'm setting my torque wrench to 29. See there how it's almost at 30 but it's at the 9? So right there is at 29 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go underneath and tighten this down until I hear a click. Now that's how these things work. So it'll ratchet just like a regular ratchet, but as soon as you get to whatever torque set you set it to, you're going to hear a click. So it'll go like... So right now I'm using a half inch driver along with a half inch torque wrench to do this. Now this is not exactly the most convenient way to do this. If you have something smaller, definitely use it. So put the torque wrench on and tighten until you hear a click. So wait till you hear a click. Almost there. Did you hear that click? I'll do it again for you. That little click. So as soon as you hear that click, you stop. So you tighten it until you hear this. See right there? So at that point, we know that this is now at 29 foot-pounds. So at this point now, lower your car down onto the ground so we can put our oil in the engine and make sure that we've got the proper amount in there. Right now when the car's in the air, if you try and read your oil level with your dipstick, you're going to get an improper reading because the car isn't completely flat. You're going to have some oil tilted and say one way inside the oil pan and you're not going to get a good reading. So check in your owner's manual how much oil to put in your car and if you know how much you can go and proceed on to the next step. So my car takes 4.2 liters in total, so that's including when you change the oil filter and the oil. So I'm going to put a little bit less than that, and on here you can actually see how much oil you've got left in here. So I started up at 5 liters exactly, and I need 4.2, so I should have about 0.8 liters left in here by the end of this. Now I'm going to leave it when I get to about a liter, maybe a liter and a half, just so I play it safe and I can read the dipstick at that point. But for now, I can go ahead and put some oil in my, air, in my car. Now if you make a little mess, not a big deal, just wipe it up with a towel. Can you see that the oil level is getting a little low? So I'm just going to pour a little bit more. I know it's under the 4.2, so just pour a little bit more. So it's yeah, just right there. So I'm going to leave this the way it is, and if I need to add more, I will. So I'm going to get this, put the cap back on it, set it aside, remove this, and then I'm going to put my filler cap back on. Turn on your car now and let it run for a good three minutes so all the oil can circulate in the engine and get warm. When you have the car on, you really want to make sure that you have no oil coming out of anywhere. So get down to the ground, make sure no oil spraying out. At that point, turn off the engine, and then we can check our dipstick to see how much oil we have left in our car. If we need more, we'll put some in. If we put too much, which you really shouldn't, if we put too much, lift the car up again off the ground, remove the little oil drain bolt, and take some out that way. Now, whatever you do, do not overfill the engine. If you put too much oil in, your crankshaft can actually, when it spins, it's gonna be hitting the oil. And if it does, you're going to start foaming the oil in the block. At that point, you're going to be basically killing your engine because when the oil gets sucked up through all the oil galleries and everything, it needs to be thick, it needs to be regular oil. It can't be foam, I guess. The foam isn't going to lubricate it as good as the liquid will. So, whatever you do, do not overfill it. If anything, go a little bit under the max line 
Now you'd think, yeah, put more oil is better, but in actuality, it's not. When you put too much, you're, you have the possibility of killing your engine. So after you turn the engine off, you're gonna to wanna to let the oil all drain to the bottom. Check your dipstick and see if you need to add more oil. If you don't know how to do that, check out the description. I'll put up a link for it. I've got another video where I show you how to check the oil in your engine. Now after you've done that, you're still not done. I'm gonna bring you in the car because there's still more steps you have to do. Now if you're working with a relatively new car, you wanna reset your maintenance minder. Now to do that, get your car, put it in the ignition, and turn it to the on position. If this is the screen right here, we've got our temperature, trip A, B, and our oil life. You wanna to go to your oil life and press your little button thing. So come to this stage, hold it down, press it and hold it down for a couple seconds. Now keep holding it until something happens. I'm pretty sure it's 10 seconds that the oil life should change. So keep holding it, see how it's flashing? Let go, so let go of the button and then press it again. Press it and hold it until it changes to 100%. I think it's five seconds this one. Yeah, so at that point, we're done. We reset that. Now if you want to, you can set it, mark down your kilometers and everything. So I've got 138, so in about 5,000 more kilometers, I'll change it. Now, the last time I did an oil change was 4,812 kilometers. Now I'm gonna write that down just for my records and maybe when she, eventually when I sell the car, the person after me is gonna be happy that I changed it now. But again, mark this kilometer down Maybe if you have a sticker, you have a piece of tape, put it on the windshield, maybe in like a spot right here, or mark it down, wherever. Just keep track and make sure that you have to do another oil change in another 5,000 kilometers. So after you're done the oil change and you've got the oil still left in that little catch can and you've still got your old oil filter sitting on top of that, what do you do? Now the proper way that you dispose of it is like this. So the All right, so two days later, I've got my old oil still inside here. I've got my old filter that I left to drain. I've got the box it came in, and I've got an empty jug. So the filter, what you're going to do is you're going to shake it until nothing else comes out, clean that up, and try and remove any oil that's still left on the filter, because we've got to bring this back to the store, and try to make it as clean as possible for the guy that's got to take care of it. So open this up, put this in here face up, so no more oil can come out. Close that up, put it aside. And then drain all the oil in here in, into this little jug that I've got. Now this is basically an old jug that I used for my last oil change. So just put that nozzle inside the end of it, lift this up, and it should all drain out into here. Pour all the oil into this jug, write used with a Sharpie marker on it, and then bring it back to the store that you bought it from. This way they can recycle it safely and you don't have to worry about dealing with this. Now whatever you guys do, do not throw your oil filter and your oil like down the drain and into your garbage because it's very bad. Bring it down to your local hardware store or wherever you buy your oil and oil filter and they should recycle it for free. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, please post them down in the comments below and I'd be happy to read them and give you guys a reply to them. I like to look at all of my comments and reply to almost every single one of them. So if you guys have a comment, you wanna say something, you got a question, put it down there and I'll be responding to you. Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.